Hi. <clears throat> Anyways, you here? You fresh? What are we doing tonight? Well, by most guys, right? You would say, this is a real basic cigar. A boring cigar. A who cares cigar. And in some aspects, I can understand the concept, including myself. Um, we have the classic Romeo, right? Um, um, the Reserve Real. This is in uh, Churchill, the longest size. Construction is phenomenal. The wrapper grade on this, I don't know if you know this, I smoke a lot of cigars. Uh, it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade, um, as opposed to just a Connecticut shade, which is a real Connecticut shade. Anyways, but then a lot of people prefer the Ecuadorian, or they say they like it better, or, um, um, at the end of the day, Ecuadorian Connecticut is cheaper, to, and I believe you're going to have more growing season as opposed to, um, uh, uh, in Connecticut, right? Because Connecticut, you know, you, you, get, you get some cold months up there. It's the Northeast of America. And I'm sure there's more taxes and et cetera in, uh, being in a democratic shithole. But anyways, as far as the execution of this cigar, the wrapper, the construction, the roll, I, I, I can't say nothing bad about it. It is really good construction. So what is it that, uh, why amongst guys that, you know, regular guys smoke cigar smokers or expert cigar smokers, people have been smoking for a long time. Why do they hate this? Why? What, what is it that, oh, we hate this cigar. Oh, it's a piece of shit. Well, it's, I smoked this last night. I bought a five pack. Um, the good thing since they're obviously mass produced um well, it's not short fill it was so long for tobacco ecuador connecticut shade nicaraguan binder and then dominican and nicaragua and the filler so um what is it that gets so disrespected and really what i think it comes down to is just that most guys when you start smoking cigars this is one of the first cigars you smoke as far as real cigars this the rack and noodle white etc maybe the monte cristo white label the uh, the Rocky Patel seven year Connecticut, you know, you're gonna start off with more lighter sticks, um, you know, something less strong and uh, easier to enjoy in the beginning, you know, and develop your palate. Also, they're generally cheaper at lounges compared to like a Liga Number no. Nine or Patron Twenty Six. So the point is though, but is it a bad quality cigar? It's not. Like it's a nice solid cigar. I smoked this yesterday walking. I had an ash like down to here, walking. Okay, so like, no. So what is it that, why does it get so much disrespect? Oh, it's a boring cigar. Is it? It's a Connecticut shade. Most Connecticut shades, 99.9, .9, are all gentle medium strength, to best medium strength. They're just chill, relaxed cigars. I don't care if it's like Padron Damaso or whatever the fuck. You change it up with this, you know, or Davidoff. Whatever it is, none of them are gonna blow your mind. Like, oh God, this is the strongest cigar I've ever had. Or, oh man, so much spice. Like, look, shade grown cigars are there to relax. I can't stress enough because when you put that shade wrapper, a weaker wrapper, I, I, I can't stress it enough that the cigar pushes what the wrapper is. I, I just, if the cigar doesn't push what the wrapper is, then why I could take the same blend and then if I put a fucking a super strong uh, Maduro wrapper over it, you know, you know, uh, I took this wrapper off or I just put it over. It. Now it becomes the outer position. Why does it change? It's going to change it. I, I just can't stress it enough. Smoke a Hemingway uh, Cameroon and then smoke a Hemingway uh, uh, Maduro. Um, <clears throat> I think that's Connecticut Broadleaf. Two different cigars, same blends except the wrap. Change it up. I, I just can't stress. Smoke Patron 64, Maduro Natural, the natural, both, they're all sun grown, and the Maduro's are. So I'm going that went to Maduro process on top of that. Well, smoke them both. Oh, well, well, you change the wrapper. It's the position. It's like a jacket. If you're wearing, you know, some big red jacket and you shoot someone and you run away, the witness is going to go, yeah, it's a guy in a big red coat. You know what I'm saying, though? That, everyone that's shooting someone is a human. Right, but that big red coat is really not everyone's wearing a red coat. The guy was bringing, anyways, you're back after the phone phone. The point is this 
Very good construction. A nice, luxurious, really um, waxy feeling wrapper. Just very slick. Um, a simple, but you know, pretty bad. So what is it? But people hate it. Well, I don't hate it. I think it has its place. Is it boring compared to most of the stuff I smoke? Yeah, because I don't generally smoke gentle, medium strength cigars. No, not anymore. You know, it, it, there's a time for them. I think I, I look at like gentle Connecticut's, uh, which most Connecticut's are gentle, but it's almost like a um, a cleansing of the palate. Uh, like if you were having um, sushi and then you have some uh, the uh, what's that? The ginger? What is that? Not ginger. You have wasabi and you have the uh, is it ginger? The stuff between to clear your palate. That's what Connecticut cigars are. Well, you smoke four days in a row of AJ Fernandez. Maybe tonight you have, uh, you know, a Romeo or some kind of, uh, and they have strong Romeos. But maybe tonight you have a chill Connecticut shade by any brand and give your palate a break. It's, you know, you're, you're you know, like recovery. Yeah? Well, this is where the Connecticut's, these type of cigars, really shine go to the beach go to the pool go for a walk when you go for a walk with these cigars man it's a great companion it doesn't fight you at all it's, it's just there to support your run it's just a great supporting actor connecticut shades are there they're not trying to outshine you they, they just chill to hang out with So I got a five pack of this for like 20 bucks. It's a great deal. The big Churchill cigar. Wow, very creamy, gentle medium strength off the bat. On the lighter side, maybe 55% darkness. You know, it, it, it's not a heavy or dark cigar and definitely not off the bat. And this is the longest version though. So as we smoke it, you know, the flavor intensity will pick up. Finish does pick up. I smoked this last night, but, um, it's, you know, it's not going to pick up. To, look, you, you, you have to understand what this is. This is a classic. This is also coming from a time where these type of cigars back then was the norm. But I don't know if you know this. Like, not everyone was always smoking, you know, Padron Family Reservers really strong, like their 85th or, or AJ Fernandez didn't even exist. There was a time before that. There was a time before, you know, brands were making now very strong cigars you know um when i was smoking cigars years ago almost 20 years ago when i started not everyone was really smoking super strong cigars. i don't even know if they really were available i don't even know what was a super strong cigar i mean years ago and people were smoking you know mostly this type of shit you know maybe in a panel but uh i, I don't i really don't recall when i was smoking in 2007 or six like going hey man this is we're gonna get our ass kicked by these cigars or I want, you know, everything's going to be the strongest Nicaraguan. Mm -mm. Right there, it picked up to a nice medium. So, there's a nice difference between gentle medium and, and medium. I'll take medium money there with gentle medium. That's just enough power to hang out with, to relax with. It's enjoyable. Silky smooth, slightly nuttery, nuttery, slightly nutty. Uh, I was going to say buttery. It's buttery, um, just a little bit of cedar, like a creamy vanilla. It's just, a, it's just, you know, I mean, a minimalist amount of black pepper spice. It's just, it's just a relaxing, kind of a toasty vibe. Like you know, good maybe with a light beer. You know, I don't know if I drink a Guinness with this or a very strong IPA. What? Can you 
chill out with this cigar? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, we're back. Perfect construction, razor sharp burn, solid ash. We're gonna drop that ash. But uh, yeah. It's just a great cigar to relax with, okay? <laughs> it's almost like, picture like Connecticut Shade Cigars as a beer, but it's a Bud Light or a Coors Light. Yeah, it's not going to be, you know, your IPA or, or even like a solid ale. You know, it, and you could say, well, it's what I, what I drank in the beginning. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody great backyard parties from 18 to 25 when I was young, a young man. Having a great time, meeting the ladies. Doing, doing what you got to do, having a great time. You know what I'm saying? Always rolling out, being fresh. Two jimmies in my pocket. Fucking, you never know, man. You know what I'm saying? You just might be pulling a whole nighter. Man, and so what? You went to a party, you bring a six-pack of Coors Light. Who gives a shit? You're just chilling out, man. You're chilling. I think as we get older, we obviously become numb to life. And so we need stuff that's stronger. And I get that. And I, and I smoke stronger cigars. But... In a way, these these lighter shade cigars, uh, but as far as the quality, it's a great quality cigar. As far as the flavor, well, you could say, well, it's basic. Well, it's a it's a Connecticut shade cigar that's designed not to be offensive. It's very smooth, medium strength, got some finish to it. You know, cedar, this little black pepper, look little creamy vanilla, but it's it's just it's just you know it's toasty. It's not overdone at all. It has its place, and especially if you're chilling out at a party, barbecue, walking around. You can have conversations with this, and, and it's not going to be blinding other people. You, know, you you smoke, you know, you know, some fucking, you know, real strong cigar, you know, saying a, a Nicaraguan puro, you know, super strong, and uh, you try to talk to some girl, you might be just, you know, start crying to smoke so fucking strong. So these kind of cigars have their place. They do, you know. So are they my favorite cigars? No, but I don't disrespect them. They had their place in my life in the beginning when I started smoking. And whenever I come back to one, I'm like, hmm, okay. Would I pay full price for it? No, because for, for, for stuff that's mass produced, like I said, got a five pack, $4 a stick. But that's a good time, chilling out. You know, is it my favorite cigar? No, the Connecticut cigars are really never my favorite cigars, but they have their place. But the massive disrespect, you know, the Romeo and Macanudo classic light, lighter shade cigars get. And listen, that's the bottom line. It's just insecurity. It's like uh, when you're in third grade, you laugh at the first graders. Oh, hey, uh, I know so much more than you. I get it. So, you know, we're all smoking Padrones and Lincoln number nines and David off Nicaraguas and fucking whatever the fuck you want to smoke. You know, Opus X, phenomenal cigars. Holy shit. Anejos. And then if somebody lights up a Romeo 1875, they're fucking douchebag. It is what it is. At the end of the day, it's a fucking cigar. Take the band off, and we're all just, take all the bands off. We're just all lighting leaves on fire. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get so cocky. Life's going to humble you. The more cocky you are, holy shit. Holy shit. It's like the alligator game. The, alligator, the longer that alligator stays out, you're going to get smacked by that fucking hammer. So, look, I'm not saying, you know, if you've all been smoking for 20 years, like me almost, yeah, you're not going to only smoke Connecticut Shade cigars. You know, what the fuck? But when you do have one, it, it, it has its place in, in the right moment. And it is to be respected. These things are made by the millions. People enjoy them. People have a lot of memories, especially their early memories in cigars. And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? And having these kind of cigars, if you're on people that don't smoke cigars, or they're new to them, and maybe they have one like once a month, or you know, or whenever they're at a party, then you could throw them a Romeo 1875, and they could smoke it and just relax with it, and then maybe get, maybe it's a it's like a good gateway cigar to talk about other cigars and say, oh, well, if you enjoyed this, oh, well, next time I'm going to give you maybe a Habana or a Sun Grown, or well, next time you know, hey, maybe you're ready for a Maduro or something like that, or something a little stronger, you know, or whatever. Um, so it has its place. I'm not going to go into any more deeper detail on such a simple type of cigar. At the end of the day, pretty much all Connecticut Shade cigars are designed to be chilled out. No one's stuffing like triple a Harrow and then putting a Connecticut, uh, you know, shade wrapper on it. it. In a way, it's almost like a bullet that wasn't designed. You could put more gunpowder 
but then it just explodes on impact. Uh, Connecticut Shade Rapids really are not designed to be, to be blown out. You know what I'm saying, though? They're not going to be blown out. It's a thin wrapper. For medium strength, chilling out, nice cedar, a little black pepper, the creaminess to it. What's wrong with that? Chilling out with a coffee or an espresso. You could have this breakfast, lunchtime, chilling out. You know what I'm saying, though? But here I am at nighttime with it. Well, good. Just changing it up. Okay? I can't always just smoke super strong cigars. But also, I want to just come back to something so basic from my past. But this basically should be respected for what they do. It's available. It's affordable. It's good quality. And for new people, it's it's a good way to get into cigars. And that's that. You know what I'm saying? And that's that. Man. A lot of good memories in my younger days smoking Romeo's. Younger man. Not a care in the motherfucking world. My dick was still big back then. My dick is still big now. Thank God. It was what it was. I'm just a regular guy in a Corolla. But it is what it is. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. And the Romeo 1875. These are classic Connecticut cigars. Just wanted to throw a little respect on them. And... Um, and that these kind of cigars, they have their place. They have their place. So anyone that's throwing shit on these cigars, they're really shitting on themselves. Because they smoked them when they when they when they first started smoking cigars. I didn't know shit when I started smoking. I, I couldn't tell the difference between, you know, smoking uh acid Cuba Cuba or Romeo or fucking whatever the fuck. I don't even know what brands were. Just fucking I don't know. Getting bundles or fucking these green cigars. Why are they green? I don't know. Just ordering stuff or trying different stuff out or whatever somebody gave me or I hear. Fuck, who fucking know? You just started or started off somewhere. And then you develop, you know, powers and you, you start hanging out cigar lounges and etc. Well, I'm glad I grew up around cigars when I did. Because back then, cigars were a lot cheaper. And the majority of cigars were what I call in that mid-tier category. And very few cigars were in luxury. Where now, 20 years later... All the mid-tier brands, they're all making luxury cigars. You know, there was no $20, $30, $40, $100 fucking Rocky Patels. It was the $4 Edge. The fucking, the five-year Edge cigar. You know what I'm saying, though? There was no fucking uh, La Gloria Cubanas for $14. La Gloria Cubanas were $5, $6 for Gordo Maduro back in the day. And they were better back then because it was E.P. Carrillo. So the point is this, we're done here. The classic Romeo 1875, it has its place. It's not a stupid cigar. It, it's great for newbies. And it's also great for guys like me or you, if you're watching this, maybe you're really into cigars. Well, this could be a moment when you just need to preemptively clear your palate a little bit. Then try this. You smoke Connecticut's for a day or two back to back. And then when you come back to your AJ Fernandez, or come back to your Padrones, come back to whatever fucking other strong cigars you smoke, it, it, it's going to be a reset, and you're going to appreciate those even more. Really, really, you know? Yeah, I can't stress that enough. Great construction, silky wrapper, good quality cigar, and... Um, that's it. I wish you the best. Uh, I hope you stay fresh. Stay out of prison. Um, there's no, yeah. I just saw the story in Long Island, Nassau County, which is in New York, not Long Island. But Long Island's a good nickname. That's what it is. This guy in Nassau County, uh, he shot four people in his family dead. I guess everyone got in the head, and then he blew his head off. Obviously, he was last. And the story said that... Uh, he was pissed off on what the family decided to do with the family's house. Because I guess maybe the family had a property and 
I don't know, obviously I'm not sure if it was all brothers and sisters and family, but maybe he was expecting his cut of the, you know, of a will, of, of the house, and maybe they fucked him over, right? Maybe, you know, maybe he was taking care of his parents and, and whatever it was, and then, then like, you know, hey, everyone's going to get their piece. And then bottom line is, though, a guy doesn't do that. And honestly, to go to that, there's more to that story. Does that make any sense? I, I I heard that story, and then when they said, "Well, he was pissed off at his family for the decision they made on their family, on their parents' house, on what they were going to do when they sold it." Well, that sounds like he was getting fucked. And if that was that kind of guy, the family should have known: don't fuck with this guy. If the, hey, if, if everyone was going to get a piece of that house and an inheritance, and they're like, you know what? Let's just fuck over this guy. Don't give him anything, and we can get more money. And he was like, yeah? Hold on a second. I'm not saying it's right or justifying it, but what I am saying, though, sometimes, sometimes there, there can be physical or immediate physical judgment for emotional or financial decisions. You know what I'm saying, though? Like when people steal, even legally, and say, oh, hey, we're not going to do this, or you thought you were going to get this, or we're not going to give you your last paycheck, or you know what, hey, we, I, you know, you invested in my company, but the whole company went bust, and you just took the money. What are you going to do about it, right? Go to court. <laughs> you might meet someone who doesn't care about it. They say, go to court. No. <laughs> I'm not operating in those rules. <laughs> Let me show you my rules. Nothing. <laughs> so it is what it is. Take it as a learning lesson. Be careful who you fuck over. Because you might fuck somebody over that... Um, it's like someone smoking a cigar in a chair and they don't have an ashtray. And you could say, well, where's your ashtray? And he could say, oh, I forgot in the house. Or he could also say, what's an ashtray? This guy had no plan for that. Fucking throw it over there. And sometimes I throw it over there. Who gives a fuck, right? Sometimes you meet people that they don't got an ashtray. And so don't judge them. It is what it is. I'll see you around. Stay fresh. Oh. It's a 4.4. It's an enjoyable, chill, medium strength cigar. Just like any other Connecticut cigar. Uh, it's relaxing. It has its place. It's affordable and even cheaper online. So nothing bad to say about this cigar if you understand what it's trying to do. It's designed to for, for newer people. Come on in. Or the casual cigar smoker. And then for guys like us that really smoke cigars, hey, it's like a good palate cleanser. Maybe you have one of these once a month and then come back to your AJ or your Padron and then you're like, oof, wow, that's so much stronger than last night. And then now it even... You know, you get that spread. I can't stress it enough. It's a it's it's a quality cigar made well, it's, but it's a Connecticut shade. Even Ecuadorian or true Connecticut, they're not going to be strong cigars. So it is what it is. You know, if you don't want to smoke them, don't smoke them. But to disrespect them, like they're stupid. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. It's just if it's not for you, it's not for you. And it's not for me on a regular basis, but I really think they have their place, you know? It's almost like guys that go to the gym and maybe have an off day or a day that you don't do weights, give your muscle recovery, maybe you just do some walking that day or whatever. This kind of cigar could be for your off day. Like maybe you smoke six strong cigars a week and on your seventh day, this is your off day. Does that make any sense? And that's what Connecticut Shade Cigars could do for you. Add them to your rotation, um, and they can expand your horizon. So it makes your stronger cigars, you're going to appreciate them more, and uh, they're going to feel even stronger. And I, and, I, and I can't stress that enough. I'll see you around. Watch out who you fuck over.